Okay, welcome back to our CMT program. We finished chapter one and we're going to start chapter two, chapter two, section one. This section is going to talk about categories and responses and response of medication. So the objectives for this section is I mean, are factors that affect how an individual responds to medication. We're going to explain differences between local and general action um, types of uh, medication routes, different methods and techniques that medications are given. Explain uh, reason for categorizing some medications as controlled substances. Um, two things to remember about medication interactions. Identify four possible unwanted effects of a medication. Also explain the importance of medications being eliminated from the body. So let's go into detail. So factors affecting medication, uh, response to medication. Um, you're going to come across a question that asks uh, in your feedback exercises, uh, true or false, are med uh, medication works the same in women as in men? <clears throat> I'm not going to give you my answer, um, but you're going to get the answer from this section here. Well, there are different factors that affect how one person responds to medication versus another person. Generally, everybody does not respond to medication the same way. It's which also then, on the other hand, on the, op on the opposite side, even though the intent of the medication was to work the same, but it's not going to work the same because everybody is not the same, which means medication does not work the same in everyone. For example, based on age, children take smaller doses than um, elderly, uh, like uh, adults people. And then elderly people, um, because their metabolism have slowed down, the kidney and uh, liver, everything has, uh, everything now works slowly. So they process, uh, their body process medication slower, which means they have a slower response to medication. You have another factor being the weight of an individual. If I weigh 300 pounds and you weigh 100 pounds, we're not going to take the same dosage of medication because uh, the body is not going to respond um, the same way. We have um, another factor being the general physical condition of the person. If I have cancer um, and I have a headache um, and you have your ordinary headache, you know, we're not going to respond the same way to the Tylenol. If we're taking, you know, I might need a thousand dosage of Tylenol, thousand milligrams of, of, of Tylenol. You might only need, you know, 500 milligrams. So um, if you look at um, what the crisis that we're facing now with the COVID-19, you'll find out that those that already had uh, underlying pre-existing condition uh, are the ones dying the most. They're not responding to treatments um, compared to someone who doesn't have those underlying conditions. And there are people who tested positive, they self-quarantine, some of them did not have any treatment, um, and then they recover from it. Whereas you have people, you know, um, because those people, uh, people, that are, people that are dying from it, even with treatment, because they had other conditions. Um, the routes that medication is given, um, some routes, <clears throat> medication works faster than other routes. For example, if you give uh, someone medication in the vein by IV, 
it's going to work faster than if you give it by mouth, for example. So you can read through that. Um, the form of the medication, um, uh, medication is available in different forms. It all depends on how the doctor wants it. So let's talk about um, route. We have the oral, oral route, which is medication goes into the mouth, with tablets, capsules, um, liquids, like that. Um, those go into the mouth. Topical route, that means medication goes on the skin, like a lotion or a patch. Um, ointments, lotions, things like that. Um, there's some sprays, you know, we talk about patches, hide. Um, eye drops, well, eye drop goes into the eye, and these are all, you, so you can read through um, how to give these. But there's another chapter that deals with um, how to administer different types of medication. I'm going to talk about that later on. Um, medication actions, in general, there are two actions that medications um, take. It could be local, which means that it's only in a specific body part, or general, meaning that the medication works the whole body. Categories of medication, and this is very important um, to pay attention to, pay extra attention to. I know you've been paying attention, but but this section here can send someone to jail. So there are some medications that are considered, that the government has considered uh, controlled. Those medications um, like uh, Devoset, Percocet, Valium, Tylenol with Codeine, Adivan, Xanax, because they are very potent. So these are medications that are very strong. <clears throat> they are also very, <clears throat> very addictive. Excuse, sorry, excuse me. So because of the potential for addiction and the percent potential for abuse, um, the government put this type of medication <clears throat> um, as classified. I mean, as controlled, not classified. So again, let me let me explain what the addiction portion means. Um, uh, we, we talked earlier about addiction. So somebody could be on on, on Percocet. Um, they get addicted to it. They start taking so much of it because they can't stop taking it, and then they overdose on it and they die. If you've been paying attention to the news. Um, there have been a lot of uh, people dying from opioid addiction, and Prococet is an example of an opioid medication. Then the other reason why they control these medications is because of abuse. The abuse come on the side of the manufacturers, the pharmacists, the doctors, doctors overprescribe, pharmacy oversupply, manufacturers overproduce, then nurses sometimes steal these medications because they have access to it. They can steal it, pretend it, the uh, documents that the, the resident took it, and then either they take it themselves or they sell it on the street. Uh, I used to have a resident at my job where, sorry, I used to have a, a co-worker at my job where she would... Um, um, sign off on a, on a poker set as if the resident took it. Um, unfortunately for her, one day she took the medication. Uh, she signed off that the resident took the medication around 2.30 and she was getting off around 3. I guess she figured all day the resident didn't ask for the poker set. So she, she decided to take a dose um, and pretend the resident took it. 
Unfortunately, as soon as she left, the evening shift nurse came in, came in. The count was correct, everything was fine because she documented that the resident took the medication. The, around 5 p.m., the resident asked for the medication. The medication was a, was a PRN medication. PRN meaning as needed. So now the resident needed the medication at five. The evening nurse looked in the MAR and saw that the, 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 the resident was given the medication at 2.30. And the prescription had said that it should be six hours apart. It was PRN every six hours. That means um, the resident cannot take it again until after six hours from the last time they took it. So on the MAR, the evening nurse saw that, you know, the morning nurse had signed that um, the resident took the medication. But this resident is an alert resident, resident and we know that he was not lying. <clears throat> so long story short, we set a trap for the nurse um, the following week she came back and she did the same thing except this time the director of nursing who was already aware of the problem was waiting for her when it was time to count the pills um, the pill was correct but before she left she did the same thing we saw that she, she, she put an entry that she gave the resident the medication so before she left, we went to the resident's room and asked him if he did ask for the medication at 2.30. He said no. So she was fired, um, but fortunately we did not report her to the Department of Health uh, Board of Nursing. They would have uh, revoked her license. I mean, uh, they take it very seriously. So these medications are controlled and um, I am going to show you an example of a control sheet later on and then show you how you um, document, how you subtract it from the sheet. So when pharmacies supply this medication to you, they will send the control sheet along with the medication. And so there's, a, there's, a, there's additional requirements when control sheets, sorry, when control medications are ordered they cannot be stored together with the regular medication they are going to be stored in a in a double locked compartment so let's say you have a file cabinet where you keep your regular medications that file cabinet is supposed to be locked anyway but if control medications are being ordered Inside the file cabinet, there must be another box with a lock where the control medications will now be kept. So that way you must unlock the file cabinet one, open a drawer and unlock another box to get to the control medication. That's what a double lock is. Double lock is not when you have two locks on the same file cabinet. So that will not be double lock. So that's um, in a nutshell uh, all about control medication, but we'll look at an example how to fill out the control sheet later on. non control drugs are just the rest of them. Okay. Medication interaction. We talked about desired effects, negative effects, no apparent effects. It's an important point to remember <coughs> concerning medication interaction the doctor must be aware of all the medication that an individual is taking. No more medications, sorry, the more medications an individual takes, the more chances there is that there will be uh, interaction. Now, the reason why, I'm sorry, to avoid the negative drug interaction, Whenever you go in for a doctor's appointment, that's why you provide a list of what the person is taking so that the doctor already know, the doctor can see the list of what the person is taking so that if the doctor is going to prescribe a new medication, it will be something that will not have a negative drug 
interaction with what the person is taking currently. Another uh, good uh, guideline to avoid negative drug interaction where it's better to get all your prescription from one place. That way the pharmacy have all your information and knows what you're taking before. You don't want to go to CVS for one prescription, go to Walgreens for another prescription, and then they're not communicating. They don't know what you're taking before. If there is an inter in a, in a, a negative interaction, then they won't know. So it's always better to fill your prescription at one place. Okay. So we talk about drug, um, you know, possible medication food interaction. Sometimes it could be um, a particular type of food that the person should not eat if they're taking a particular medication. So, um, possible unwanted effects of medication, um, medication allergy, um, cumulative, that's a condition in which the body does not eliminate uh, one dose of medication before another. Tolerance, um, resistance to the effect of medication that has built up over time. We talked about that earlier. Addiction is another one. Okay. So medication elimination. The effects of any medication stop only after the medication has been deactivated or metabolized, but not yet eliminated from the body um, by the lungs, the kidneys, intestine, depending on the type of medication. Okay. So let's go to section two. And in this section, we're going to talk about storage of medication and preparation for admi administration. So we talked earlier about storage and said that um, you should always follow the instruction on the bottle. Um, the pharmacy will tell you whether the medication should be in the refrigerator, if it should be in room temperature or so. So here we talk about, um, we're going to talk about um, um, types of forms for recording medication administration, um, preparing medication for, uh, preparing medication administration record from a doctor's order, um, describe how you would obtain information about a medication, describe procedures for storing medication, a describe procedure for storing control medication, describe procedures for disposing of unused medication. So chapter two, section two. Okay. So before you begin to complete the paperwork and store medication, um, you and the resident, uh, sorry, let me repeat that. Before, before you begin to complete the paperwork and store the medication, you and the individual you work with should have the following. The medication in the container supplied by the pharmacist, um, a correct and legible label on the container, um, the uh, doctor's order form to compare and make sure it's the right um, medication. Again, those five things, or in this case, six, six there's a sixth one, that we talked about earlier. Again, the purpose of the medication, time limit for the desired effect to appear, any significant negative effect, any known interaction, any special instruction, is it a controlled substance so that you know how to store it. So forms required for documenting medication administration. Okay. So here we're going to talk about MAR. So MAR stands for Medication Administration Record. And I'm going to show you an example um, later on when we practice um, preparing the MAR. So the MAR is a form that documents that medications have been 
taken or have been given as ordered. This is the document, it's a legal document. You know, the doctor's prescription form is, for, is, is to be used for the doctor, by the doctor to write the prescription, to write the order. To prove that the orders the order is being carried out, the prescriptions are being given, then a different record is required. That record is called MAR, okay, Medication Administration Record. It is the record of you administering the medication. Okay. So the following information must be recorded on the MAR before you enter information about the medication. The name of the resident, sex, birth, dates, um, uh, date of birth, doctor's name, any allergies, okay, diagnosis, um, the diet information, uh, the name of the delegating nurse, well, that's not the, that is not going to be on the MAR. Um, no, this, the, na the name of the delegating nurse is going to be somewhere else. Uh, the dates of the prescription, at the top of the MAR, the uh, name of the agency, um, then the month and year of the MAR. So for example, uh, if, if the month is April, you must write April 2000, sorry, 2020. Every month there's a separate MAR. You know, the MAR is like a calendar record of medication being given that month. You know, every, every month there's gonna be a new record, okay? The name of the medication, the uh, the dose, the routes, the times, um, the dates medication was ordered, and so on. We, we're going to go over the MAR um, in more detail when we have a blank MAR and practice. If the medication has been ordered for a specific time period only, then you have to indicate the time period in the block where the medication is written. If a new medication is ordered in the middle of a month, for an individual who has already has an MAR filled out, uh, then a new MAR does not have to be started. So for example, each blank MAR, you know, it depends on, depend on the type of MAR. You can put five or six different types of prescription for one for the same person on one MAR. So what they're saying here is, let's say the person already have two prescriptions and the MAR have five spaces, then you still have space for three more prescriptions. You don't need to go and take a new blank MAR and uh, write the third prescription. Just add that third prescription to the two prescription the person already have. Information on the MAR, like I said, must be, it's a legal document and the legal color is black. So you can only use black ink to uh, complete the MAR. The MAR is a legal document again. Never, never erase anything on it. Never use a whiteout. Never use a pencil. Never scratch out any part of it. So be sure to enter all this information before you store the medication. So you complete the PMOF pharmacy label, MAR, sorry, compare, this is your three-way check. You always have to compare the doctor's order, the pharmacy label, and the MAR to make sure they all have the same information, okay? Control sheets, <coughs> Um, I said earlier that when a, when a control medication is ordered, there's going to be a control sheet sent along uh, with the uh, prescription. 
And I'm going to show you an example later on. Okay. So let's go to storing medication. And we, we talked about this earlier as well. That if medication needs to be stored in the fridge, it has to be in a double lock. And you should store medication based on their similarity. For example, all liquid bottle medications store it together in one in the same section. Um, eye drops start together. Um, inhalers you store them together. Things like that. So let's move on. And we we said that. Um, if medication needs to, <clears throat> needs to be refrigerated, then it should be in a box inside the fridge that has a lock, okay, to avoid any um, accidental, um, you know, you don't want the resident to mistakenly go in the fridge and think the bottle there is juice and then they drink it. Disposing medication, um, sometimes you may need to, you know, destroy medications when medication is discontinued, uh, the individual refused to take it, so medication drop on the floor. And medication does not have to be disposed of each time the healthcare professional writes a new prescription as long as medication, then dosage route remains the same. You can continue using it if it's the same information. Okay. So you can read through the rest of that. And we are going to um, go to uh, section three of chapter two administering medication. We're going to talk about the six rights. Uh, condition under which medication must not be administered, uh, four basic principles, when and why you should uh, wash your hands, safety principles in administering medication, uh, determine when a medication error has occurred, describe your responsibilities when you identify that an error has occurred. We're going to talk about PRN medication, which is PRN means as needed, PRN orders, and, the, and list your responsibilities when administering PRN medications. So let's start here. We'll talk, we're going to talk about uh, principles um, in the use of medications. We we'll talk about that. So each, each resident should be involved in the decision to receive medication and should be given an explanation of the medication's action and effects. Especially if you're giving a new medication, you want to tell the resident what the medication is for and uh, you know what illness, uh, why the doctor prescribed that medication for the resident. Before you give medication to a resident, goodness. Okay, let's continue. Um, this time, let's talk about the six rights. Six rights of medication administration. Very, very important. We talked about that a little earlier, but now we're going to talk about it in a more detailed uh, form. So, you're about to give medication. Um, very important to avoid any error. Um, before now, you receive a doctor's order, you prepare the MAR, you process the doctor's order, you obtain the medication from the pharmacy. When pharmacy delivered the medication, you did your three-way check, which you compared the doctor's order against the pharmacy label, against the MAR. Everything matched. This time, you are about to give the medication to the resident. You have to follow the six rights. Right number one, is this the right person 
especially if you're new and you don't you're not familiar with your resident you need to identify the resident on the mar the date of birth is on there you can ask the resident mr jones please state your full name and your date of birth they'll tell you uh, my name is jack jones my date of birth is 5155 then you look on the mar it's jack jones date of birth is 5155 you can also look on their name band on their wrists they should be wearing a name band um, some facilities will have the picture of the resident in the corner of the mar some facilities that uses the electronic mar uh, like a laptop they have a picture of the resident on there you've identified the resident next thing is to pull to read the mar to see what medication they're taking are you about to give them the right medication maybe they have Tylenol ordered tegritol ordered and it's only time to give the tegritol not the Tylenol you reach into your drawer you pull out the tegritol you look at it and it says tegritol you look at the mar it says tegritol okay that's the right medication is it the right dose? The order says, for example, Tegritol, 200 milligrams, take one tablet. Then you look on the uh, pack, Tegritol, 200 milligrams, take one tablet. What if it doesn't say Tegritol, 200 milligrams? What if it says Tegritol, 100 milligrams? Then you know you need to go back to the doctor's original doctor's order to verify what the correct order was all right you verify the, the medication and the dose is it the right time uh, if medication is ordered for say 4 pm you have one hour before and one hour after to give the medication so any 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 doctor's order they say two hour window to give the medication you can start one hour early and no later than one hour after the scheduled time you're still going to sign for the time that it was scheduled next thing are you giving the medication the right way medication says give by mouth you must give by mouth if it says give by rectum it has to be by rectum then number six the right chatting, right documentation. You have finished giving the medication. You make sure they take the medication. Now you're going to chat by signing the MAR on the box under the date in front of the time of that medication. You're going to use the two initials of your name, the first letter of your first name, and the first letter of your last name and then you you, you put the two letters there on the back of the mar uh, there's a space to sometimes it's on the back sometimes it's on the bottom of the same mar on the front but usually it's on the back where you're supposed to spell out what your initial stands for you're going to put your initial you're going to spell out your your for your first name and spell out your last name and your title to know who the initials belong to. So that's how you chat, uh, which is the sixth step of the six rights. So we talk about those, right medication, right dose, right time, right chatting, and additional safety precautions, uh, principles beyond the six rights. You're going to wash your hands before you start giving medication. Um, you're going to prepare to start your med pass, gather your supplies, get your cups, get your straws, your spoon. Some resin might need their medication to be crushed because they cannot swallow the pill. So you're going to get your pill crusher. Some people might need... Uh, um, 
something to sweeten the medication to make them swallow it uh, easily maybe ice cream or pudding or applesauce or orange juice some people don't like taking medication with water know your residents and know what they prefer it's all about them uh, no need to uh, make a big deal out of it they request for certain things to, to be used for the medication try and accommodate that it will make your job easier never leave your medications unattended don't, don't leave your medication cart uh, unlocked and go to the bathroom or go into the residence room and the other residents can come to your cart and take needles and take medications and stuff so go through the rest of that and you know learn more about uh, other do's and don'ts of uh, passing medication hand washing principles well especially in this era of uh, infection everywhere very important that you know how to wash your hands properly proper way to wash hands um, so your hands are dirty um, you go to the sink you're going to turn the water on test the temperature make sure it's uh, to your convenience to your comfort get your soap distribute the soap um, all over your hands both hands and then you start scrubbing and to produce friction start from the back of one hand uh, in between the fingers the, the back of the other hand um, then you're going to um, uh, wash the uh, fingernails uh, by doing like a circular motion with all your fingernails fingernails of one hand on the palm of the other hand you go like in a circle you should be doing that for no less than 20 seconds just the scrubbing the, 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 the leathering then get do your wrists do your wrists when you finish you rinse your hands completely don't splash and do not go back and touch the sink the, the, the handle of the water because you're going to really contaminate your hands so you leave the water running and then you take your paper towel dry your hands dry completely then take another dry paper towel and turn the water off so that's how you wash your hands correctly and we know that hand washing is the single most effective way of um, preventing the spread of infection when do you wash your hands you arrive at work before you start work you wash your hands you before you go into the residence room you wash your hands when you're done in that room you're coming out you wash your hands before you eat you wash your hands after you eat you wash your hands you go to the bathroom when you're done you wash your hands so you wash your hands many many times so be very careful and um, keep your um, surrounding clean try to observe good infection control uh, procedures as recommended okay so let's move on to the process the medication administration process again uh, you've identified the right person and all of that uh, we've talked about this already um, you know get your MAR um, check for allergies um, you know gather your supplies all of that then um, you follow the procedure give the medication according to the doctor's order and so on um, if it's a liquid medication you know you're going to if it says to shake well before you pour it then you must shake it well before you pour it and then make sure you, you know the measurements and um, uh, for example if a medication order says uh, to give 10 ml of uh, a particular medication um, which uh, will equal 200 um, uh, milligrams okay so you know how to measure the, the measuring cup you're gonna put it on the table 
um, so it'll be flat and then you're gonna pour it um, to get to that line that says 10 ml so you have to be very careful not to pour too much okay so when administering medication never leave medication cabinet unlocked we talked about that or unattended um, go through all of those steps we've talked about those uh, already um, now when not to give medication so you see your resident um, even medication is scheduled but on certain occasion when it is time to administer medication unusual things may happen and you have to stop giving medication if for example the doctor's order does not match the MAR or does not match the pharmacy label then you need to stop to, to, to look into it medication has expired where well, you can give expired medication the residence resident is exhibiting behavior or physical changes that for example maybe they, they're having slurred speech or they look like something is wrong they need to stop giving them medication maybe they're about to have seizure or something and then you have to stop and report that um, until that condition is taken care of before you you know determine whether to give the medication or not medication errors errors happen every now and then you have to take every precaution to prevent med errors medication error occurs when any one or more of the six rights of the medication has been violated it's the wrong medication it's the wrong person it's the wrong dose it's the wrong time it's the wrong route medication has expired um so it could be any number of things so you have to know what to do when an error has occurred if you have given the wrong medication you have to report to the charge nurse immediately your delegating nurse prn orders prn stands for as needed okay it's prn so some medications are prescribed as as needed for example the doctor could put a prescription in place and say yeah give tylenol 325 milligrams uh, uh two tablets which equals 650 milligrams by mouth every six hours as needed for pain or for fever of 100 degrees or higher that means it's, it's an order in case the person have a headache a pain or a fever of 100 degrees so that way you don't have to call the nurse if they have a, if they have pain or they have fever you check the fever and it's 100 degrees or higher then you give the medication and then you document and then you report to you report the change to your charge nurse because that's now a, a change okay so we will have an example of a prn order later on start medication <clears throat> is medication that is ordered to be given now uh, let's say um, let's say you give that tylenol for, for, for fever and um, an hour later you recheck the, feed, the temperature and it's still high you, well you don't have any order to do anything you call your delegating nurse and she says well give another dose of Tylenol now so that's a start order give it immediately okay if you have watched uh, movies that involve emergency room you hear doctor says yeah, do this start do this start give that start it means now do it immediately it's urgent okay let's move on to chapter sorry we're still on chapter two section four documenting medication administration so you've prepared the medication and you've uh, given the medication then you're gonna chart the medication administration like we said before um 
if an order has been discontinued then you have to know how to do that we're going to practice that um if it's an error you have to know how to correct it um uh, chat on the, on the mar the information needed for an individual who is away at the time that is somebody who uh, it's time to take the medication but they're not home maybe they went on a doctor's appointment or they went uh, the family took them out shopping they're not back yet and it's time to give them medication how would you document that so we're gonna we're gonna have an example of that um enter an order for medication um enter an order for PRN medication we're gonna start medication um chart a change in an existing medication order uh, medication prescribed for a limited number of days for example doctor says take amoxicillin for infection just for five days or for 10 days you have to know how to put it um, how to to set it up uh, medication administered outside of the prescribed time frame um, mistake in documenting on the MAR so there are so many things that could happen and um, you have to know what to do. So some um, guidelines to follow. You can never have someone else document medication that you give. Or you cannot document medication that somebody else gave. And you or someone else cannot chat medication before giving it. So you always give first. Make sure they've taken it before you document. Only the person who has the administered, who has administered the medication, is the only one that can sign off the medication. Reviewing the MAR, you always want to review MAR every time that you're using the MAR to do your work. You're also reviewing it to see is there any error, is there any, is everything correct on it, the dates the order was written. Um, just check. Don't just read the medication take the medication and go give it see if there's any issue with the doctor's order you'll be surprised how many times days go by weeks go by and somebody auditing the mar just find happen to find an error that a lot of people just overlooked for days and for weeks and it could be deadly so be very careful we're going to practice the mar it's a lot about the MAR we're going to do. So um, don't worry, we're going to have several examples to use to practice. Um, how to discontinue medication. Sometimes doctor um, might call and say, well, this person's blood level um, of a particular medication is too high. Um, he wants to stop the medication immediately. So you have to know how to discontinue medication. Um, so that's talking about discontinued medication um, refill medication we talked about that earlier um, always look and see how much medication you have on hand see if it's time to call the pharmacy to get a refill um, or it's time to call the doctor to get a new prescription Again, when, when an error occurs, you're going to call the charge nurse immediately and just follow the instructions that she gives. The most important thing about medication error is, is the resident having any reaction to the overdose? Let's say you were supposed to give 200 milligrams of Tegritol, you mistakenly give 400 milligrams then you're going to be observing the resident to see if there's any toxicity um, uh, about uh, because of the overdose and you have to report it immediately in some cases the charge nurse might ask you to send the resident to the hospital if she thinks it's, it's a serious uh, case but you have to be very careful check double check before you give the medication when a resident vomits the medication out, what do you do? Uh, procedure for chatting when medication has been vomited out. Uh, it's, it depends on the medication. 
um, also, um, but you have to be careful. But we'll have um, normally if you raise them, vomit medication out. If it's just an ordinary medication, um, you're going to wait and make sure that the vomiting has stopped uh, before giving the resident another medication. Okay, just give the resident, you know, uh, take care of the vomiting first, find out why they're vomiting, and then uh, make sure they're okay before you now give them the medication that they were supposed to have. Okay. What happens when uh, medication, resident refuse medication? How do you document that? Well, when, it, when, it, when a resident refuse medication, well, first of all, let's back up a little bit. You have to try everything possible to not have your resident refuse their medication. You will do yourself a great favor if you take additional time to try to encourage them to take their medication, not forcing them, just encourage them. Know their pattern. Maybe they like their medication at a certain time. Then go to them at that time. Don't go to them when you know they're watching a show. Um, you know, some people are sports fanatic. Um, I know during football season, if uh, the game is on, you know, I'm not taking any phone call. I'm not eating. I'm not having any conversation because my eyes, my attention is fixed on the game. So, resident might be watching a game at 4 p.m. Uh, you know, uh, you know they like watching the game at 4. Medication is due at 4. You had from 3 o'clock to give that medication. And you waited until 4. So, try to walk around their schedule. It's all about them, not about you. To make it hard. But, if you try and try, sometimes you just have to go back. You might, you might have to go back maybe 10 minutes later or 15 minutes later and try again. They might refuse at 4, but you go back at 4.30 and they take it. You know, have that relationship with them. But after you've tried everything and they still refuse, you're going to put your initial in the box and put a circle around it. A circle always means that the medication was not given, but it does not say why. Um, some MARs on the back of it, they have a comment where you can put a one-line sentence that says um, resident refused Tegritol, for example. But that's not all you're going to do. Remember reporting changes? This is a change. They refuse their medication. That's a reportable medical uh, change in medical condition. So you're going to call your charge nurse and you're going to report that the resident refused their Tegritol. The, the charge nurse also have to report to the resident family, reports to the doctor, and then give instructions. Maybe she might want you to monitor the resident, keep an eye on the resident in case they have seizure. Remember, if your resident is a seizure resident and then they refuse their Tegritol, what's going to happen next? They're going to have a seizure. So, you know, either you take your walk and sit next to the resident or take the resident to sit next to you. At least if they start having seizure, you can control them and, and gently lay them down on the floor. Instead of them falling off the chair, um, if, if you're not monitoring them, they could start having the seizure, could be while they're eating, and before you know it, they hit the floor and then they have serious injury. So you have to be very careful. The next thing is, you know, um, how to chart a PRN order. I'm going to show that to you on the uh, MAR. Um, so all of this section here, um, we're going to have a, a lengthy section about different types of orders, how to discontinue, how to hold um, um, regular chatting, uh, PRN medication, start medication, things like that. So, all of that, let's go to see what else is here. 
um, procedure for charting. Occasionally, a medication is only for a limited number of days. Okay, so this is, this is talking about medication that the doctor has ordered for say ten days or seven days. The most important thing to know about this type of orders is stopping it. Because in many instances, medications that were only supposed to be for five days or for, for 10 days continue the whole month. And I've seen it, seen it many times. Why? Because the person that prepared the MAR did not put the stop sign on the last day. So for example, let's say today is the 10th of the month. Doctor says take medication for 10 days. Well, we know that the 20th will be the 10th day. On that 20th, so you're gonna box it. You're gonna start the medication and put your signs showing that medication starts on the 10th, okay? Then you're gonna count, you're gonna count 10 doses. Let me give an, an example. Doctor says give penicillin 500 milligrams by mouth four times a day for 10 days. Other date is the 10th of the month. And the medication is at 6 a.m., 12 noon, 6 p.m. and 12 midnight. Let's say the order came in at 4 p.m. You know the 6 a.m. dose and 12 noon dose have passed. Those will start the next day on the 11th. But the 6 p.m. dose and the 12 midnight dose starts on that 10th. So what you're going to do is count 10, 10 doses and stop on the other end. Um, going by that example, the 6 p.m. and the midnight that start that will start on that 10th will end on the night on the 19th then on from the 20th till the end of the month you're going to draw a line to close out those boxes so that nobody gives it for 6 p.m. and midnight you've given the 10 doses then for 6 a.m. and 12 noon because they started on the 11th um, they're going to end on the 20th. So then for those two, you're going to draw your lines also to block it on the 21st so that nobody gives it after the 20th. So that's what um, this section is talking about. I will show you an example um, on, the, on the MAR. So all of this section here are things that we are going to put on the MAR. On this section here, chapter three, chapter three, abbreviations. Well, abbreviations are something that throughout the healthcare industry are being minimized because the abbreviations are causing errors. So, you know, some people misunderstand um, the, the abbreviations and go do something different. A nurse at my job was supposed to give eye drops only in the right eye. The other had said, give one drop OD twice a day. OD means right eye. Instead, the nurse inter misinterpreted the OD to mean both eyes. Both eyes is OU. Left eye is OS. So, the, the, this nurse was giving the eye drops in both eyes. Unfortunately, the inspectors uh, were doing their survey. They uh, happened to pick him to watch him pass medication. Um, they went to the resident with the eye drops and they gave the res he gave the resident in both eyes and the, the, the surveyor read the, um, the, the order and said to the nurse, you just made an error, the medication only supposed to go in the right eye 
and he did not argue with the surveyor saying no, it's supposed to go in both eyes. And then here the resident resident said, I've been telling them that the doctor told me it's only my right eye that was bad and not both eyes, and they've been giving it to me in both eyes. We were in, in trouble. I think we had a fine of about 15,000 um, because the inspectors wanted to know how long have we been giving the residents the medication in, uh, in the right, in the, in both eyes instead of just the right eye. So to avoid that problem again, we stopped using abbreviations, but not all of it. We stopped using some abbreviations. Any such abbreviation in a doctor's order, we spell it out. Just spell out right eye, spell out both eyes, instead of using the abbreviations. So here, in this section here, let's go through a few abbreviations. The route, oral, oral is by mouth, ophthalmic is in the eye, optic is in the ear, nasal is in the nose. So you can go through the rest of those. And then some more commonly used abbreviations and terminology. Q means every um, Q one hour, that's every one hour, every four hour, QOD every other day. Um, let's go to some other ones. So just, you know, on your own, try to understand. Uh, this is the, try to understand some of these abbreviations. This is the eye drops, the uh, uh, eye abbreviations that I was talking about. GTT means a drop. OD is right eye, OS is left eye, OU, both eyes, and so on. So, just uh, a lot of these are, are, are not in use, but you know, you're going to keep this material as your reference and you can always uh, refer to it um, if you need to. But the abbreviations are kind of being cut back. You need to know your equivalents and stuff like that. So um, try to understand that section. Okay.